I've been on drugs for 26 years. I want to actually feel like I'm not dependent on all of these drugs for the rest of my life. I really want to be free from anything and be like naturally healed. Hey, hey, I'm talking to Brad today. He's got a crazy story that um really, what is the word? Is resounds is that's not the right resonates with me because I've dealt with eczema myself, but not nothing to like the lengths you have. And I would like to hear about your story. Yeah. So I've just had eczema my whole life and it's something that's just affected me so horribly for 26 years. And basically in the last year, I just, well, I had 26 years of trying Western medicine. I went to all the doctors and they prescribed me all the creams and it got to the point where it was working most of my life. But the problem is if the more you use steroids, the less and less it works because wow. your body gets addicted to it. So eventually it just stopped working. Oh, and that wow. was about three years ago. And then no matter how much steroids I put on, it just, it just get worse and worse. So I tried like many different treatments from UV therapy to uh, antibiotics I was taking every six months. And then the doctors were just recommending I take Dupixin, which is an injection. And that injection you take twice a month for the rest of your life. And I just, I was just so disillusioned already by steroids and steroids ruins your skin. It ruins like, it's, it's just horrible because, uh, yeah, you get addicted to it and um, it just like skin aside, I'm sure there's, there's more problems too. I think some people talk about you can get overweight on it. You can have like, yeah, issues of weight gain and it's just, yeah, it's it's not addressing the root cause. It's or it's just masking the problem. So mm -hmm. then they offered Dupixin, which is really the same thing. It just masks the expression of eczema. It doesn't actually heal the root cause in the gut. So yeah, the problem is with me, I... Yeah, I, I I was looking up I was looking up these studies online of of what Dupixin can do for you, can mm -hmm. do to you, mm -hmm. and it causes like corneal abrasion. Uh, people online in Dupixin communities were talking about how they have they have sun se sensitivity now. They 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 gained weight and like the worst case scenario is with such severe corneal abrasion you can risk going blind. So of course my doctor was like. You know, Brad, these are rare cases. But the thing is, so they, they kept on recommending I take Dupixent and all my friends who have eczema were saying, you know, it's not that bad. Like, yeah, it's a bit of conjunctivitis, but I, it, it's you can you can deal with it. And But I was noticing these people as well. Like you, you could tell if they looked a bit bloated and it, I just felt not comfortable mm -hmm. using an injection for the rest of my life twice a month. Sure. So I just thought, you know, I've, be, I've been on drugs for 26 years I want to actually feel like I'm not dependent on all of these drugs for the rest of my life. I really want to be free from anything and be like naturally healed. So sure. for, for three years, I was trying to find natural remedies. So I went to like this holistic gym and where they had saunas and cold plungers. And I, I was always going into the ocean every day, winter or summer in Melbourne, it's really cold. So oh, I was wow. diving in, diving into the ocean and yeah, it's freezing. Uh, I guess it's not like icy like Canada, but it's about it, like in the, in the winter, it gets to about four degrees Celsius. Okay. So that's like, I don't know, uh, zero is um, freezing temperature, like ice. Oh, okay. So, so it, in the water, it, get, it's, it was always around 11 degrees minimum. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's really cold, and but that has a lot of health benefits. So I was noticing these people in uh, in a place called Brighton in, in Melbourne. The, these people were testi uh, um, testifying that they had nerve damage, so they could they could barely walk. And then when they go into the water and they come out of the water, they could walk again. Wow! So it was just it was just amazing. So I thought to myself, I need to do something like this because maybe maybe I can heal my eczema by doing it. So I started that and I still do, I still do cold water therapy to this day. Uh, so I don't, now that I'm healed, I don't exactly do it uh, as, as much as I, oh, I don't actually go into like a cold bath. I just go into the ocean and now it's summer. So it's quite warm, but in the winter I'll, I'll be practicing it. Like, like I'm trying to mimic what people do in the, in the, 
ancestrally. So like, sure. I don't think they'd have cold plunges, <laughs> uh, cold, cold plunge baths, but you know, when it's winter, they probably wash themselves in the lake, even though it's freezing. So, sure. so that's what I'm trying to mimic. And, right. uh, and it's the same with my diet as well. So I was trying the sauna and I was covered in eczema. I'd go into the sauna, like I'd be, you know, bleeding and weeping and oh. it's horribly in pain. And the doctors are like, you know, this, this saunas are not good because that's inflaming mm -hmm. your eczema. Mm -hmm. But I, I was subscribing to this idea, which I was reading from studies online that you can, the, the term is liposis or like cellular cleansing that you get from autophagy. There's a similar process in the saunas where you release all these toxins sure. in your, in your body when you're in the sauna. So, I mean, it's, the science is gray on that. So like, I'm not, I'm not really highlighting that, highlighting that as much, but from these alternate holistic places, they were recommending sauna, ice baths and diet changes as well as exercises. So I did all four. So when I went to this gym, this owner of the gym actually reached out to me and he said, look, I see your eczema. It's horrible. And I had eczema just like that before. So you have to believe me. I actually went on this carnivore diet. And I don't have eczema now. And the gym, who owns the gym, was like, he had he had all of these different machines um, and, and like holistic machines to help you out. But anyway, he was just like, I had eczema too. You need to start this lion diet, carnivore diet. And believe me, your eczema will go away. So I was already trying all of these remedies, holistic remedies. So I was open to the idea of just eating meat. Um, uh, at the same time, I, I bought... Paul Saladino's book, The Carnival Code, and I was mm -hmm. reading. And so that that eliminated all my qualms about whether this would cause me cancer or atherosclerosis, heart disease, or constipation, because he, he really identifies right across the book that there's no problem. Um, all of the science is there. And yeah, it's he, he thoroughly dissects why the IARC, which is the International Agency for Research on Cancer, their report um, is wrong. And because it's purely epidemiological, which is sure. conflating ideas. I mean, like a lot of people who eat meat, if they eat meat every day, like they, they might believe that meat's unhealthy. So they're, so they're eating meat. And a lot of these people might be smoking, might be drinking, might be not going to the gyms because they, if they're going to eat meat and they believe meat is bad for you and they eat it every day, then they probably would take risks in other areas. And so in an, this is what Paul Saladino talks about in an epidemiological right. study, you can't out, you can't remove that. You can't eliminate that from the study. So there's right. conf this confounding uh, factors to, uh, so it's just not, it's not clinical enough. It's not right. just, uh, accurate enough. Right. And uh, yeah, just to, just to talk on that a tiny bit sure. longer. Sure. 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 Um, the, the one, there was like 14 studies from the IARC report on cancer and there was only one study. This was taken from 800 studies where they narrowed it down to 14. And then at the end, there was only one study that had any statistical mm. significance whatsoever. And that was done by a, a vegan group, mm. which is uh, uh, <laughs> the um, seventh day, seventh day Adventists, which is adv advocating uh, vegetarian and vegan diets. And, right. and then these authors of the study even noted that the people with the highest incidence of cancer were the ones who had insulin resistance and were overweight. So it's epidemiological, which means it's not very reliable. And the fact is the people who are having the most cancer from eating meat were the ones that were already overweight and suffering from insulin resistance. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so he, yeah, he goes, he dissects every single thing from constipation to atherosclerosis. And it's very interesting for anyone that is afraid or that the carnival diet would kill them. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I was yeah. I was on this diet and I, so yeah, I just started noticing, I started noticing changes straight away. In wow. about two, two weeks, I was, I could sleep again because at that point I just couldn't sleep. Right. Uh, I was like, I'd be lucky to get one hour a night. That's crazy. And then, yeah. I'm curious, like on a scale of one to 10, how extreme was the pain? Can you let, or, and what oh. did you look like well, with the eczema for 26 years? So, so yeah, other so, people can understand. Yeah. Um, if you want to see photos to your listeners, sure. Um, like I've put all the photos on my Instagram and on okay. my YouTube. So yeah, the photos are very, 
uh, graphic. Oh wow! <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I saw they're so graphic. Short you did, and I was like, oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it's, they're so graphic that I mean, I most of my content is censored on TikTok. That's why I haven't been able to reach many people on TikTok because right. all of the graphic photos just don't go out there. It's oh, wow. just too graphic, and they censor it. So anyway, um, the pain levels. I mean, I think an accurate way to describe the pain. Well, to start off with, I'll say, I'll say when I was when I was sleeping, my dreams were always wild in the sense that I, I was, one night I'd be dreaming that crabs are pinching me everywhere. And one night I'd be dreaming that I was walking through like electrical wires. Mm. Another night I'd be crawling through glass <laughs> on, on my stomach. And oh, uh, so crazy. yeah, and the, there's actually um, there's this I was listening to this podcast with a person, uh, her name's, I think her name is a uh, Amy, but what, uh, regardless, it's called Exma Conquerors. And in yeah. one of the, in one of the episodes, they talk about how there's a scale from zero to one that measures pain and okay. people who have cancer measure at zero. So one is optimal health. Perfect. Okay. Zero is horrible health, you're debilitating pain. So okay. people who have cancer usually get, uh, receive 0 0.3 on that scale. Okay. So the thing is, so this is what Abby talks about, not Amy, it's Abby. Mm -hmm. um, Abby talks about how people who have severe eczema also measured 0 0.3 on that scale. And it baffled doctors because doctors were saying, why are they measuring as bad as cancer if they just have eczema? But the thing is you're in chronic pain all the time. So in terms of pain threshold, pain levels, that were like the statistics generally across all these people with eczema were measuring the same debilitating levels of pain as cancer patients. That's crazy. So, yeah. So it's, it's really horrible. And, and, and it makes sense why the suicide rate is like you're, you're at a 36% increased chance of killing yourself if you have severe eczema and, and uh 44% more likely to think about it. So yeah, it was just debilitating pain and uh, it's very hard to, to get through at least in your mindset. Sure. You have to you have to make sure you're in. I mean, you're already suffering. So if you allow yourself to sink into, into depression, which is very easy when you're in a state of constant agony every day, mm -hmm. then you're just going to sink into. You're going to deteriorate even faster. So, like throughout right. my journey, I just had to make sure that my mental faculties were in order. So I was trying my hardest to read all of these survival stories of people going to Mount Everest and surviving that, or Edward Shackleton in, in Antarctica, because. And surviving that over two years because keeping your mind sane is paramount when you're in just debilitating pain. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Wow. So from the points, first, I'd like to know what you were eating, like what specifically were you were eating when you changed your diet and how long did it take before it all cleared up? <laughs> I was just eating a standard diet before. It was oh, just, okay. uh, I, I wasn't eating fast food. Like I was aware that I was aware since I was 13 that every time I ate McDonald's, my eczema would flare up. Okay. And uh, the doctor I was seeing at the time was, I would actually profess to him, does eczema get worse when I eat McDonald's? And yeah. he said, you know, I don't think so. I think that's just in your mind. You know, uh, eczema is on the skin and McDonald's is in the gut. <clears throat> so there's no reason there'd be a correlation there. And so when at 13, I already knew like that's, I just thought that's bullshit. That's there's no way that's true because every time I eat McDonald's, my skin's in horrible pain. So, I mean, I, I was already questioning the doctors at 13. I've got nothing against doctors, but I really mm -hmm. think that they're wrong. They're really wrong on this. Uh, sure. Like Paul Saladino talks about how they only have 14 hours of medical. Uh, sorry, they only have 14 hours of dietary nutrition education across their whole 10 years of medical school. Right. So. And yet that's like so basic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all learning. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, I was just so disillusioned by them. And uh in terms of in terms of diet. Yeah. I was just I was just not eating McDonald's. I was mm -hmm. eating a standard diet. So I had a lot of vegetables, I had fruit and fish, but the problem was the most inflammatory, the most toxic foods, which I suggest anyone eliminate if if uh, you're just, if you're finding you have eczema or auto, autoimmune diseases, if you want to eliminate, or if you want to start somewhere, the ho most horrible foods 
is the seed oils that like the the chips is cooked in all of the mm -hmm. rapeseed oil or vegetable oil and it's the uh, processed foods it's the carbohydrates in like pasta and gluten in uh, in, in the wheat and there's there's all these studies done on like uh, around 2006 they started spraying immense quantities of glyphosate on all of the wheat crops and then you noticed a huge uptake this huge exponential increase in uh uh, celiac cases mm -hmm. and uh, autoimmune issues in the gut. So this is clearly related to the uh, the gluten. Uh, sorry, people started getting immense amounts of gluten intolerances after right. 2006. So this was like again, this you can't say um, ca uh, cause and causation. It's 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 vague because sure. it's not it's not done clinically. But you can clearly see that this is when they started spraying the glyphosate on all of the wheat, and then you can see the the cases of gluten intolerances go intolerances going up exponentially. So yeah, it's it's really quite frightening. But uh right. yeah, I just had a, a sad diet and okay. that's why I was just so sick. Sure. Yeah, I understand. Uh and then when you started carnivore, like eating this way, what were you eating when you started carnivore and how long did it take for your skin to clear up? Um it, it took me a hundred days to clear up completely. Oh, wow. Like not not hundred days on the I say hundred days it's around twelve to fourteen weeks. Okay. Yeah. And then what were you eating? Like what types of food were you eating during oh, that time period? During, during that time, I was just eating yeah. meat. That's it. Like just just ruminant meat. So oh, okay. no, no no chicken. No like so chicken. People say you know that's meat, but the thing is, chicken and pig are fed grains and soy, which if they're eating that then you're also eating it because it gets mm -hmm. stored like the lectins and the inflammatory anti-nutrients in soy and grain get stored in its fat and its proteins. So you're eating it essentially. And so I noticed every time I was eating pig and chicken, then I would in get inflamed. Okay. So that's why, that's why I uh, followed the strict lion diet, which is anything from a ruminant grazing animal, like a cow or a, uh, like a, a lamb, lamb for instance. Okay. So I was eating mainly, mainly organs. Okay. So because it's cheaper as well, but mainly sure. from a cow, <laughs> cow and a lamb. Okay. And that was my whole diet for like three months. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but then I noticed, started noticing actually electrolyte deficiencies. Um, oh, I, ju I jumped to the punchline too quick. So basically, okay. I mm -hmm. uh, I was getting all these cramps and um, I really horrible cramps. I remember working out and um, every time I did sit-ups, I would just like, oh, I'd be in horrible pain and I could literally see the, uh, I, I thought it looked like a hernia. So I thought it was a hernia because like I saw my muscles sticking out oh, and no. I went to the doctors and I'm like, what's this? And um, the doctor was like, I, is that, I can't tell if that's your hernia or your six pack. I'm like, oh, thank you. But, um, <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, he was just like, yeah, it's sticking out quite a lot and um, we have to do an ultrasound and then, um, yeah, he, he, he checked it out and, uh, it was like, look, there's not a hernia. It's, um, there's no tear, which is great. It's, it's probably just a muscle spasm. So I, I looked up online whether this is caused by electrolyte deficiencies and surely enough it was. So it was because I wasn't getting enough calcium, magnesium, and potassium. And how did you and, fix that? Uh, yeah. So I just started, uh, reintroducing I didn't want to take synthetic supplements. That's what Michaela Peterson does. That's mm -hmm. why she's been able to survive on an all meat diet for six years because she has supplements, vitamin C, vitamin D, magnesium, potassium, and calcium. And so, I mean, it's, it's, this is what Paul Saladino also talks about with like no, uh, about vegan diets and I have nothing against people who opt to take a vegan diet. I think it's great. If it heals you, it heals you. And mm -hmm. uh, I support it. But he, Paul Saladino's criticism was that if you have to take supplements, for example, on a vegan diet, you, they're usually taking B12 and iron supplements. So if you have to take supplements, his argument is that it's not a very op, uh, optimal holistically a holistic diet because you have to literally take supplements in order to thrive on it. So sure. he would, he would argue uh, an optimal diet is one where you don't have to take any supplements and you can literally just survive off the nutrients from the food you're eating. Sure. So that's why I didn't want to take synthetic supplements. Uh, there's a lot of chemicals in there too. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to just 
resort to completely natural. So I started to reintroduce coconuts okay. and avocado at the time. Okay. So, you know, um, avocado actually is, the, both of them have salicylates. So plants actually have anti-nutrients. And Dr. Kiltz talks about this on his on his uh, channel, on his, on his mm -hmm. blogs. He talks about how 99.99% of all the pesticides you ingest actually come from plants naturally. They have natural defense mechanisms, uh, uh, like plant toxins that they use to defend themselves from you eating it. Right. Okay. So it's just like, you know, how animals can attack you or run away. The plants do it through toxins. So there's, there's, so we all know that there's benefits to, to like vegetables, but there are what, what's not usually spoken is that there's, there's anti-nutrients in these vegetables, for example, in broccoli. And there's a, there's a funny, uh, people always talk about, oh, the Simpsons predict everything, but there's actually a funny episode in the Simpsons <laughs> where, where Homer's eating broccoli and he dies and the doctors are like, this is the case. Look at this Marge. Um, he ate broccoli. Oh, of course. And he says, I thought broccoli was good for you. And it's just like, well, they try to warn you with its horrible taste. <laughs> um, so it, <laughs> it, it turns out, yeah, it turns uh -huh. out broccoli has, um, you know, they have benefits. I'm not going to refute that, but there's, for example, there's this, there's two chemicals, myrosinase and glucoraphanin, and they're, they're stored in different cellul cellular compartments inside broccoli. But the thing is, its defense mechanism is when you eat it, those cell cellular walls get crushed. And so myrosinase and glucoraphanin combine when you're chewing it. Mm. And this is its literal function to create this toxin then, which is called so, uh, sephorophane. And that sephorophane is toxic, too toxic for the plant, let alone us. So it deliberately releases that through a chemical reaction so that we're being poisoned when we eat broccoli. So there's so much, this, and this is one, I mean, like we talk about spinach, there's right. oxalates in that. And so people, I mean, Paul Saladino's book, he talks about how his dad had kidney stones and he thought maybe I, it's not because I'm eating healthy after eat more healthy. So he ate more spinach and his kidney stones got worse That's because crazy. there's oxalate crystals in there and the oxalate crystals are responsible for the kidney stones. Well, increase your chance of having kidney stones. So right. it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just crazy. So yeah, I haven't eaten vegetables in two years. <laughs> uh, the only plant foods I do eat, and Paul Saladino talks about this too. There's a yeah. thing called the plant toxicity spectrum. So naturally in evolution, I mean, the plant wants you to eat its fruit because it wants you to, it wants you to like the animal will eat the fruit and then ingest the seed and then walk and wander somewhere else. And then it will excrete that seed um, in feces on the ground. And then a new plant can grow from that and, sure. and then it just improves its germination. So it wants you to eat fruit. And so fruit doesn't have as much toxins. Um, if you just measure the plant toxicity, fruit tends to have less toxins as vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so that's why Paul Saladino's current diet, he actually has a lot of carbs. And he, I think he invented the term animal-based diet. Sure. And so that's, that's what I'm following now. Okay. Um, and so, so for the first year, to answer your question. It's uh, okay. I like all this other information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for the first year, I, I have for three months, I had a lion diet until I started getting those uh, cramps. Mm -hmm. And then for the year following that, I just had meat plus coconut and avocado. And at times when I had, um, when I, when I had intense cramps, Paul Saladin Saladino also recommends eating honey. So raw honey straight from the farm. So it was just those four items. Okay. But today, today I have, uh, I have fish. I had fish last night and, uh, I have, a whole plethora of fruits that, but they all, they all have to be organic. So sure. yeah, they're, they're quite expensive when they're organic. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. <laughs> but I, but yeah, this is what people talk about. How do I supposed to afford all of this? And, you know, I, I think that's, that's the, that's the hardest thing about it. I mean, there is obviously there's a challenge if you're, if you're used to a standard diet and you've got all these cravings to eat sugar, then there's right. a challenge to, shift from your standard diet to a, a more refined diet that will heal you. Right. But once you get, once you get used to that, like I have no qualms about, like I don't feel restricted by what I'm eating anymore. 
Awesome. I actually, I, I'm expanding it all the time. So just recently I reincorporated dates and dates in the store when you buy it from like, you know, like in Australia, we call it Woolworths. So just like. Uh, uh, we had uh, Woolworths in the US. Oh, but, nice. Yeah, but oh, not anymore, cool. not for years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, in, in Woolworths, um, you can buy, you can buy dates, but the problem is when I ate those dates, I was so inflamed. It's because they spray sulfur on it to preserve it. So if you're going to buy oh, wow. dates or you're going to buy anything that's dried, you have yeah. to source it from an organic source. So sure. I got my dates straight from like the Middle East. <laughs> I oh, get it wow. shipped here. Yeah. So, but you know, that you can seems just get a it. little expensive also. <laughs> oh, it, it is expensive. That's, that's the problem. But right. you know, there's no inflammation. And if you have a sweet tooth and you want to have like cake or something, dates is perfect. It tastes sure. like chocolate. <laughs> yeah. They're very sweet. That's true. Yeah. I mean, so chocolate, yeah. Chocolate actually has high levels of oxalates. So, you know, something to be aware of, but yeah, if you want sure. that sweet tooth dates, medjool sure. dates is what I recommend. So yeah. I think you need to find like what works for you and what you're really, what you're trying to handle. But, um, so I'm curious, like when you were dealing with this through your whole life, like what was your mindset like for your future and what is it now that you've resolved it? Like what are your plans and goals? Like, did you have a yeah. future in mind as yeah, a child? Great question. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did you have a future? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, when I was uh, in horrible pain, I mean, when during my childhood, it was still controllable. It was manageable. So okay. the way the doctors described it to me is, you know, you have a hyperactive immune system. Your immune system is attacking itself. So what you need to do is you need to manage your eczema with these steroid creams because your, and they said this all the time, your eczema is a raging inferno. It's just burning. And the only way we can control it mm. is with steroid creams. Okay. And so steroid creams are bad, but it's a necessary evil to control your eczema. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it worked during my childhood. So I, I still had eczema and it was quite bad, but it wasn't debilitating. Like I wasn't impaired physically, like for the, for the, three years before I was healed, I couldn't leave my bed. Like I couldn't move my neck. Oh, wow. Moving my neck would make it all bleed. Oh my God. And it was just in horrible pain. I had to quit my job and it was, it was really debilitating. So most of my life I was able to survive. Like I, I went to school and I had friends and the friends were very like understanding. Like they didn't, then we didn't talk about it. I remember like playing with my friend and then someone who came along who didn't know me Mm -hmm. was like, I just stopped us playing. And then he was like, oh my God, like, what's wrong with your face? That's oh, just, man. Like, what's wrong with you? And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's, and I just look down like, oh, it's eczema. And it's, and he's just like, damn, that's horrible. And then, so my friends didn't actually talk about it. Like they just forgot it, like didn't forget, but like they just didn't bring it up, right. which was nice. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, so many memories like that. Like, like, oh, I don't want to sit next to him. He has like, he has nits and oh, he's mm -hmm. Shedding skin and it's just yeah, it's just it, it it um I tried very hard to like you know keep yourself confident and keep yourself like um integrated into, into society. But when okay. it got very difficult across the three years, I was just like, you know what, I just don't even want to go out anymore. Mm -hmm. It was just so bad. Um and like uh yeah, just going to the beach because I, I wanted to maintain going into the ocean to try and heal. Mm -hmm. I would be getting these comments from people like, oh, I could hear them talking. Uh, yeah. They were like, wow, your feet, that guy's foot is horrible. And, um, oh, man, I wouldn't go out if I was like, yeah. Like, I could, I could, it, like one person I remember saying, like, gross, gross, you know, like, and uh, I was teaching these people on piano. I was still a, like my, my form of income was piano, t um, piano lessons. And so it was okay. very difficult to acquire new students because every time, literally mm -hmm. every time I had a free trial lesson, they'd be like, Oh my God, what's wrong with your hands? Am I going to get, am I going to get that if I play the piano? I'm like, no, oh. so they'd be freaked, freaked out and they would just leave and they wouldn't come back. So it was like, it's very hard to find right. work and integrate yourself into society when you're, dying and you look horrible um i mean it's it's like a reminder of death and a lot of people don't want to hear that in society you know and right so it's like the people who stayed with me are the ones that were 
already my students from before and they okay. understood that I had an affliction and and they they pitied me so they continued because you know mm -hmm. I was offering them music lessons and they enjoyed my lessons but yeah um so anyway I got to the point where I actually started a six month course in computer programming because I was already prepared to never leave my room again and just wow. just code for the rest of my life from my bedroom and uh so I, I finished a six month course um, and yeah, then I, then I just like found the carnival diet and I'm, and then once I was able to heal myself again, I just opened up opportunities. I, I could do, I can do anything again, which is so, so liberating and I'm immensely grateful. So at the moment I've, I've enrolled back into university to, so I've already got a degree in science, but that mm -hmm. was in a field called mechanical systems, which is like a branch between applied mathematics and mechanical engineering. So it was not really nutrition related. So I've gone back to, to school and I'm studying biochemistry now. So Wonderful. With, with the aspirations of continuing my journey in this carnivore domain and, yeah, you know, trying to make a difference. Awesome. Yeah. That's so great. in terms of, plans for the future yeah. like um yeah as a kid I, I had I always had big dreams I always wanted to I did I, I think I, I was always torn between because you can see in the background there's a guitar and a piano I was always torn yeah. between music and science and I uh, had that dilemma for the longest time so I was talking to all my teachers about uh, I mean they were like you have to choose one so yeah so I had I had plans in terms of future like I was always thinking about doing science and music so today like now that my health is given back to me like that's my plan for the future to be in that carnival domain and know my term so i don't want to be just like some i don't want to be some guy on the internet that people always criticize me oh you're just some guy on the internet shirtless on a, on a jet ski like what do you know like so i'm just like i don't want that i really <laughs> yeah. want to have some form of credibility to me so that's why i'm going back to school and i'll continue in that domain and I also love my music, so I want to be doing both for the future. So which which parallels my dreams to answer your question sure. as a kid, which was stopped when my health just fell apart. But right. he's back now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. I saw your story on Instagram. Sean Baker shared it months ago. And yeah. I'm so happy I reached out to you finally. I saw it. I'm like, I got to talk to this guy. How do I find him? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hope that you keep doing this and I'll keep doing this. And at least your story here, we can reach a bunch of many. I hope we can reach a lot of people because I just the little bit of eczema that I've suffered on my hands. I'm like, mm. I can't imagine people that suffer from eczema all over their body, paralysis, yeah. and all these things. It's so debilitating. So yeah. um, thanks so much for sharing your story. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there anything else you would want to say to possibly give somebody who is in your position some hope? Don't be afraid to try new things. I mean, it's very scary to try a diet that people are telling you causes cancer and heart disease. I mean, it, I get it. It's concerning. Like the first question that Dr. Anthony Shafee talks about that people always ask him is what about my cholesterol? What about my cholesterol? And so just to touch on that quickly, I mean, 50% of people have safe levels of low cholesterol and they have heart attacks, like not 50% right. of people, but 50% of the heart attacks are with people who have low LDL levels. So LDL is the bad cholesterol. Okay. So that you can't, so from that, if it's like 50, 50, you can't conclude that LDL is causing heart attacks because like, right. the whole consensus is this lipid hypothesis of which LDL from cholesterol is clogging your arteries and causing heart attacks. And this was disseminated by this guy called Ansel Keys in the fifties and sixties. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, he, Dr. Anthony Schaefer even talks about how this guy was, it's literally been proven that he was paid in his words, a paid stooge of the sugar companies. To, because they were aware that sugar was causing these, um, all of these problems from diabetes to, um, uh, I forget, I forget all the names, but all of these, all of the insulin resistance, all these issues, uh, exponential increase in autoimmune disorders, heart attacks, and 
and and and so they had to blame it on something and so i think it was president eisenhower had a heart attack at the time and so they they vilified meat saying it was cholesterol cholesterol is the issue but there's always been an alternate theory called the thrombogenic hypothesis where it's not about cholesterol it's just about blood clotting and so I mean, yeah, so Dr. Anthony Schaefer talks about it. 50% of the cases have low LDL. So there's just no reason to be afraid of your LDL levels being higher. And But this is why I'm bringing it up because it is scary because you go to the doctors and you get a blood test and they say, Brad, the safe levels of LDL should be below 5.17 millimol per liter. And right. your LDL levels are 6.9. <laughs> and I actually did a post on that recently on my Instagram and people messaged me in the comments saying, oh, mine's at eight or oh, mine's at nine millimole per liter. So just like soaring. Mm -hmm. And, but the thing is, there's nothing to be afraid of with that. The, the scary thing is because, because there's actually research that says the, the, the higher level you have of LDL, the safer you are, uh, the, the safer you are protected against heart attacks uh, and ischemic stroke. Um, and uh, yeah, the, what, what Dr. Anthony Schaefer talks about is the fact is our, our liver and our bodies are pumping out this cholesterol, 300 milligrams, I believe, if I'm getting the statistic right. But that our body needs that in our brain Otherwise, he talks about our brains are literally decaying. And he's a, he's a primary source of information. So if you want more detail on this, where he's talking about it and unpacking it in scientific terms really accurately, and, and he's also a doctor, like I would suggest go to him. And because my sources of information is coming from him and all of the medical journeys, journals that he shares and disseminates, as well as all the carnival doctors like Dr. Sean Baker, Dr. Kiltz, Dr. Paul Saladino. So you know, they're the primary source of information. But he literally talks about how people's brains are decaying because they don't have enough fat that they're eating. And so it's very interesting. So I would, obviously, this can, can, completely contradicts my, uh, modern mainstream media and ma mainstream science and mainstream information. So the one thing I'd suggest is for people listening is to always have a critical mindset question what I'm saying, question what the news is saying, question everything. Because if you don't question things, then you subscribe exactly to what the mainstream media are telling you. Right. And and they're also telling you that eczema is cur uh, incurable. So you'll probably stay incured. So, but if you are questioning, then you're willing to say, maybe all of this is wrong. Maybe Sean Baker's right. Maybe I'll be fine eating more fat and maybe the carnivore diet will heal me. I mean, if you're already, the sad thing is most people try it when they're already dying. Right. You don't need to, you don't need to get, you don't need to be dying to try it. I mean, Dr. Anthony, I just keep bringing him up, but Dr. Anthony Schaefer he talks about, you know, people are unaware of how bad they feel until they go on the carnivore diet. Right. Because totally. it's like a, it's like what they talk about with, they, they use an analogy in global warming where there's a frog in the hot water. So you, you really can't tell it's getting hotter <laughs> until you jump out and come back in. Right. But it's kind of it's like that with the standard diet because, I mean, people always tell me, oh, when you're in your 30s, you, your knees start to cramp up and, you know, I'm getting older now. You don't expect to have late nights anymore. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, just, that's just bullshit. I mean, you totally. know, uh, Sean Baker is breaking world records at 55. And um, Jordan Peterson talks about being on, being on an all-meat diet. His gum disease went away and he's never felt sharper and healthier in his life. So, yeah, you don't, need to you don't need to be sick. If you just eat the right optimal foods, you will be healthy. And it makes sense because mm -hmm. ancestrally we've been eating this for 2 million years. I don't think the cavemen would be thinking, oh, Dave, you got to worry about your your yeah, LDL levels are pretty high. You don't want to. You don't want to get. You don't want to get constipation. I mean, they would have just been looking at that woolly mammoth and like, good, let's eat it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it's just ancestrally that worked for us. We were thriving. You can look like four hundred uh, photos of like a hundred, two hundred years ago. Uh, sorry, not photos two hundred years, maybe a hundred years ago. Like uh, you can see, you can see everyone was healthy, even in the, uh, you know, in in. Um, in London, there's these pictures in, in black and white of people and they're all slim. And now 
this is the this is the statistic from three to nine percent uh it's increasing every one in ten people have autoimmune dis disorders and that statistic is increasing at a rate of three to nine percent every year it's That's terrible it's just it's just horribly increasing and we need to ask the question why mm -hmm. so as paul salino says in his book the carnival code he'd argue that we need to it's a, he, he uses the metaphor of i lost something and his mum would say where, where's where's obviously where's the last place you saw it so if we've lost our health when was the last time we were healthy mm -hmm. well if you look back when we we're eating all locally sourced produce we were healthy we weren't eating we weren't there weren't things in our supermarkets to increase shelf life and there right. weren't processed foods that you could just pick up and like a packet of chips that last indefinitely on the shelf you know so it, there's a possibility that that's why we're all chronically ill it's a good possibility for yeah. sure <laughs> so yeah the takeaway from that is just critical think and make up your own mind i mean i a lot of the things i said today it's better to source it from sean baker because i'm, I'm still learning myself so sure. sean, sean baker and all of these carnival doctors they they have they've been in this field for a long time and they have very refined uh, information. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. But it's also really good to just hear from like a random guy on the internet who healed, <laughs> his, <laughs> who healed yeah. his eczema because you could also, I like your story. You can see also. it's working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can see it's so, working. So, so yeah, for me, it's like the, what separates me from them, them, I guess is like, yeah. I mean, what separates me from everyone else is I, I'm just like, there's information is there for everyone to see. So my story resonates, I guess, because I took that information and I, I, I used it and right. it worked for me. And so it's evidence to help people that Absolutely. yes, this can work for you too. So yeah. while I, 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 I'm, I'm working on it in the sense that I'm, mm -hmm. I want to be, uh, I want to be able to communicate in the terms like Dr. Sean Baker can, but, and have that credibility. But for now it's like, you can use me as an example that, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to die. You, you will be healthy. Like I'm healthier right. than I have ever been in my life. Like That's I don't awesome. have to worry about wearing long pants because I'm covering up the wounds anymore. Mm. Like uh, this is literally the dream I had as a kid. Like one day I just wish I could have no eczema right. and now I have it. So and you can have it too, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's great. I think that's a great place uh, to end this conversation. It's a perfect place. <laughs> um, Brad, thank you so much. I no worries, Alia. Really enjoy talking to you. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this far, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. If you would like to support my channel further, these are some items that are in my store. There is a link in the description, but it's also below the video if you are in US and Canada. Um, check out this artwork. It's beautiful. It's my mom's original artwork, and I decided to pop it on a bunch of cups, cups and other things. We also have like pillows, all sorts of stuff. So check out the link. If any of this, if you'd like any of this, feel free to get something. I would love to sell a hundred thousand of these items this year. I know I'm a big dreamer. Um, but if you want to help with that and you like this artwork and you like these things, go ahead and get something and that'll support me greatly. Thank you so much. Talk to y'all later. Bye.